Thank you very much, Pyra. And Enrated shimmied on over here after that victory. Congratulations, great game on Luna from the entire team. Talk me through the pick and ban phase because the Copenhagen Wolves had some good things up their sleeve coming in. So we started with the pick and ban phase as we usually do. We kind of sorted the priorities we had and we felt like there were a lot of picks open that were good for us. So we just tried to like make them pick whatever they want and still get advantage out of it. And it kind of worked for us, I feel. Um, there were a lot of bans on top lane. We secured Lissandra pretty early on. I think that just worked for itself. Yeah, I think the draft was pretty even up until the last pick. We saw you hover Leona, I imagine, for a uh, counter in Annie lane. And then you went back to the Lulu. I'll be honest, I'm not a Lulu fan, so I'll, I'll give you the, the chance to go for the Lulu. Why, why that over the Leona, for example, here? Um, there were several options here. Like, Leona wasn't the only one, but I felt like Leona is the most aggressive one, but also the hardest to punish in a way, because you have to make those aggressive plays in order to capitalize on mm -hmm. the lane. So I felt like this game would be a lot about jungle pressure onto bot lane, so I rather fell back to a Lulu pick, which is more defensive, but still in the matchup, has a lot of protective duties against any and kind of countered their engage in a way, which helped us as well. And since the Nidalee was ahead in early game, I think Lulu was in the end a better pick because we could just hold bot lane and wave clear and do a lot more with it in transitioning into mid lane. Yeah, what is, what is your opinion purely in the 2v2 of the, of the Annie Callista? Because it seemed pretty strong and I, in my opinion it is by far stronger. But you guys actually, I was surprised that you uh, you kept it that close. I think on paper you technically should have lost harder. I don't know. What is, what is your um, opinion on the I lane? think on paper just with the matchups, I feel like if you're confident in the matchup and you play champions you really like, you can basically win even, let's say, 40, 60, yeah. 30, 70 lanes. Uh, we pressured them early. We had a lot of advantage until the nearly ga uh, gank came in, and that kind of threw us like a bit off, and they started to pressure us instead. Um, the trades in early game were favorable. Um, I th maybe could have pressured a bit more, but I was afraid because nearly got just got ahead and had a lot more pressure. I feel like um, if I played a bit more aggressive, we would have even won the game like a bit harder on bot lane. But I feel like we just went even. And if that one kill didn't happen, I think that we would have won the lane just simply by matchup. Yeah, and uh, after that, actually maybe getting or going even, there was a quadra kill coming in for Fox. And we're actually going to pull that replay up on the screen because it looked like it could go the other way for a little bit if we get that up on the screen. And Ray to talk us through the moves here. So we knew they tried to be aggressive and we were just waiting for the engage basically. Uh, we had Sven already in the back and he was just waiting to counter engage there. Uh, so we come in, we try to find an opening, it didn't quite work. The TP came in, the opening came in the end as well because they kind of made a turn there. Uh, we got Freeze, first of all, and after that um, Fox was already coming towards bot lane, making a really good roam. So we just cleaned up afterwards. Yeah, it's definitely uh, Fox has an impressive showing this game. It seems like before I felt like Fox was part of SK, but in the shadows, you know? He was just like this tiny wheel turning in the, in the giant machine that is SK Gaming. But this game, he uh, he was a bigger wheel, you know? He started actually getting into his comfort zone, going for a lot of plays. We see even here, he, he's cleaning up because he soul killed his lane opponent first, then came down a bot lane. We saw him do these fancy flash plays where he repositioned for the double chain. Um, how good is Fox and, and how much more is is left in him confident wise like how much room does he have to grow on the stage i think we shouldn't talk about confidence because every mid laner should have just a certain yeah, amount okay. of confidence how to play it I after feel like a while how, how much better this fox is going to get i think he do hasn't reached a skill cap at all i think he has a lot of room to grow and a lot of experience to gain and he's just slowly but surely gaining it throughout the matches i feel like we have a lot more to, of him to see throughout the next weeks and months to come i think that match by match he will show a, a stronger game and if people underestimate them things like that can happen Yep. Talking about taking it match by match. If you guys win tomorrow, you have the record of uh, Alliance. Eight wins in a row. That was last season. And if next week you beat Fnatic in that matchup, you beat Fnatic's or you even out Fnatic's record of nine wins uh, in a row, who can stop you guys? Well, we don't know yet, but uh, one game might come at some point. Uh, we're not really feeling the pressure just yet. We're not having that in our mind. I feel like everyone has it a bit like in the back of his mind, maybe. But that's like all. We don't go for records. We're here to play and we're here to win. And that's what we're doing. We're just trying to show our best performance. And we're just practicing to be on top. And that's just all we can do. Yeah, you guys are reigning solo here in Europe. Congratulations. Thank Another you. win on the board for SK Gaming. Now, with the first half of this week's game's history, the numbers don't lie. With 10 kills, 3 assists, and a triple kill as LeBlanc, today's most valuable fantasy LCS player, SK Gaming's mid laner Fox, with 31 points. It was Yellow Star for the longest in the day, but Fox, fantastic play here on LeBlanc.
Yeah, he definitely showed up, and it's it's as the it said. You know, first few weeks, Fox played pretty passive. You know, just mm -hmm. part of the team, but he's definitely showing up, especially with the LeBlanc pick. Every time I see LeBlanc pick so far, I was like, yeah, I don't know, man. That champion just doesn't have it anymore, and I've been proven wrong because he he definitely showed up. So he killed Ari, which is the D tier one uh, mid lane pick right now, and just calmly roamed down for a triple quarter kill. So yeah, definitely good showing for Fox. Yeah, must feel good for his confidence as well. Before we sign off, let's update the standings. Still undefeated at the top of the tables is, of course, SK Gaming at 7-0. and The Fnatic is right behind them at 6-1. and Now, the Unicorns of Love have tied elements for third place. And toward the bottom of the table, Meet Your Makers now find themselves alone in the number 10 spot. Elements tied with the Unicorns of Love in this one. Um, and the rest of the table, business as usual, SK still at the top. Yeah, I'm just pl I'm I'm surprised by UOL. You know, a lot of people uh, were saying, yeah, they couldn't come in. You know, these cheesy picks, the poppy top lane, it's gonna run out of steam. They'll get figured out. But they've shown resilience. They've shown really good play, and uh, I'm just happy to see them there. And then, yeah, I'm kind of disappointed in elements. Kind of expected more. Um, definitely think if they um, get a coach or just change these like bad habits and put a little more like I don't know how to say this. Uh, just passion, you know, grinta. for Grinta. Yeah, that's the word, but I don't even, even know if <laughs> I it read means. your mind, man. Exactly. That That's what I want to see, you know. I just want to see an aggress ag aggressive elements rather than what's been happening the last few matches. Yeah, we'll see what they can do tomorrow. Week four of the spring split continues tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central European time, 9 a.m. Pacific, as H2K take on Rocket. SK Gaming will face Giants as they look for their eighth straight win and will end the day with MYM versus the Unicorns of Love. And we see there the elements tomorrow up versus Gamut. Gamut with, uh, well, another win on the board, so that might be a hard one for elements. Yeah, but I feel like Gambit was really, really sloppy, both in closing out the game as well as their item choices, their vision control. They didn't pick up the oracles early. They danced around that Baron for way too long. And Elements, you know, you have to snowball into them into the ground if you want to beat them. You know, if you leave them a little bit of, of, of wiggle room, they'll eventually come back. You know, they have these players that can do that. And I, I don't think Gambit showed that they had what it takes to beat Elements. But, you know, I can be proven wrong. Yep, we'll see tomorrow. That's all from us until then, from myself, Crepo, and the European LCS team. Thank you for joining us, and we'll catch you again tomorrow.